If we run out of time, then where does it go? Is time even real? Does anyone know? Maybe time's just a construct of human perception, an illusion created by... <laughs> As you can see, the second Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared video is just as creative and unsettling as the first go around. Ah, uh, but it also dips its toes into the mysteries of time. Just what is time anyway? <laughs> At its most basic level, time is the rate of change in the universe. And like it or not, we are constantly undergoing change. We age, the planets move around the sun, and things inevitably fall apart. Early humans quickly took note of the cyclical nature of the sun, stars, moon, and seasons and utilized the information to organize their lives. Natural time mattered. Local time mattered. For ancient societies, the understanding of time was as cyclical as the cosmic movements they observed. The sun rose and set. People were born and people died, all in an endless cycle. In fact, it was the repetition of the cycle that made things matter. But as human societies became more modern, they largely discarded cyclical time in favor of linear time, all with a great deal of help from calendars and clocks. Ah yes, clock time. On the surface of things, it seems like a very rigid and unflinching order. We measure the passage of time in a dreary procession of seconds, minutes, hours, and years, but this doesn't mean time flows at a constant rate. Just as the water in a river rushes or slows depending on the size of the channel, time flows at different rates in different places. In other words, time is relative. But what causes this fluctuation along our one-way trek from the cradle to the grave? Well, it all comes down to the relationship between time and space. Humans frolic about in three spatial dimensions of length, width, and depth. Time joins the party as that most crucial fourth dimension. Time can't exist without space, and space can't exist without time. The two exist as one, the space-time continuum. Any event that occurs in the universe has to involve both of them. Time moves a little faster on the roof than it does in the basement. Not enough that you'd notice, but it does. The phenomenon is far more noticeable when scientists compare the ultra-precise clocks on satellites with the ones on Earth. So clocks in orbit or in the air gradually drift ahead of Earth-bound clocks. Scientists first measured this by synchronizing very precise clocks both on the ground and in planes. By the end of the journey, the clocks were out of sync. The ones on the were ahead of the ones that traveled on the plane. Global positioning satellites accrue an extra third of a billionth of a second every day. And that's because satellites are farther away from the mass of the Earth. Down here on the surface, the planet's mass drags on time and slows it down in small measures. Speed also plays a role in the rate at which we experience time. Time passes more slowly the closer you approach the unbreakable cosmic speed limit we call the speed of light. But what does that really tell us about the nature of time and how we experience it? According to cosmologist Max Tegmark, our life is like a movie, and space-time is the DVD. Just consider a DVD copy of Risky Business. The DVD doesn't change, so you can't say Tom Cruise is traveling through the DVD. He's traveling through the lifespan of the film, and so is the viewer. Speed it up, slow it down, but the physical DVD doesn't change. And this is where things get a bit mind-bending. You can watch Risky Business ten times in a row, and the story will never change. And the DVD certainly never changes. According to Tegmark, our lives work the same way. We only experience an illusion of a changing thing three-dimensional world. Meanwhile, nothing actually changes in the four-dimensional union of space-time. Of course, that would mean that everything is predetermined and there's no such thing as free will. In other words, it's only our consciousness that gives special importance to any particular moment in the timescape. Whether we're talking about the fall of the dinosaurs, the invention of the wheel, your birth, your eventual death, or this moment right now. So does that make you feel better about the nature of time? Or do you feel space-time crunching in around you? And what's the shortest and the longest hour you've ever experienced in your life? Let us know in the comments below and to keep the videos coming, make sure to subscribe.